YouTube, I'm Dazzling Win and I hope you all had a pleasant week. I'm glad to announce that this week is my 10th week airing and I couldn't have done it without all of you. I have a little over 600 subscribers and it has nearly been 2 months and I'd like to thank all of you who have subscribed and continue to support this channel. I've been really busy trying to balance my schoolwork with research, but with God's mercy I've been able to do so and after next Wednesday, May 7th, the same day as my dog's birthday, I should have more time which I'm hoping to get more done. I've been praying and trying to figure out what I'm going to do a video on. A lot of people have informed me about Saturn and how we constantly worship it, and I've decided to research it as well as how a few other planets play a role in our day-to-day -day lives. But what fascinated me the most about this topic was the Saturn's connection to Satan and the 666 mark of the beast. I've never been one for astrology. I've always tried it carefully when it comes to anything that may be in relation to the occult. What I come to find is sometimes understanding the reasoning behind it, um, what it is you're up against is necessary. As you know by now, I am constantly talking about fallen angels and what they did in Noah's time and how it will happen again. After all, they say history is bound to repeat itself. Well, it so happens with Saturn being the black sun that it may have a connection with the very last days. Why? Because some say it used to actually be the sun. Some associate it with the golden age, which is interesting because people argue about when exactly it occurred, but some believe that it was during the time of the watchers, while others believe it was in a more pre-Adamic age, uh, predating humanity. And some people believe in a pre-Adamic age with humans. Personally, I think there was a pre-Adamic age, I don't believe that there are people on Earth before Adam and Eve. I believe that they're the progenitors for each and every man and woman on Earth. But I do believe before they were created, there was something else that lived here. There was another flood that occurred, and the angels might have been a part of it as well and had a, part, had a hand in leading them astray as well. In Genesis, when God speaks on how he's going to flood the Earth because of the sin... Um, that was committed between the fallen angels mating with women producing Nephilim, which are poison to the earth, as well as just the other, um, you know, obscene things occur going on at that time. In Genesis 6-3, it says, Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. Their days will be a hundred and twenty years. Interesting. When I was doing research on Saturn, one commonly held belief is that it is associated with age and time and death. This is is why we have perverse secret societies like the Saturn death cult obsessed with eternal youth and the talk of the fountain of youth which I come to find actually is more or less human blood a lot, a lot of times the blood of the young and innocent Countess Elizabeth Bathory would bathe in the blood of young virgins to preserve her youth as well as stories of Vlad the Impaler that Dracula is based off impaling people which I believe has its. this is where a lot of vampire stories get their roots from. All of these people who sacrifice children, why? Because they want to absorb their youth. Pedophilia runs rampant, why? Because they believe they can steal the kids' youth as they molest them. They can make it theirs. Which, I may add, is a pretty um, twist, uh, twisted way to think. But when people are into this stuff, they honestly believe that they're doing themselves a service and once again selfishness they don't care about that kid and how they're damaging their life imagine if you were a selfish billionaire if you could live forever with all of your money and you could be young and you could just keep living on the movie in time was a perfect example of what the elite would love the ideal to live forever where time was basically the new currency while the poor die out since time is luxury only afforded to them since they are on top. Sat one thing I want to add as well is that I'm in history class right now and we're and we just talked about, you know, imperialism and we talked about social Darwinism. And you know, a lot of people took that concept and not only applied it to survival of the fittest, but also to, you know, the wealthy um, had to learn to adapt better to their surroundings. Therefore, if you were poor and you were working for them, you should be thankful that they're supplying you a job. And, you know, basically, that ideal hasn't really gone away. And a lot of the people on top actually see the people who are, who are middle class, who are poor, 
if you're not one of them, if you're not a billionaire, if you're not from their bloodline, then you're like an insect, you're like an ant to them, and they don't really care if they tread over you, and they don't really care about your life, and this is why um, population reduction is one of the things, this is why there's the Georgia Guidestones, and this is why they're constantly trying to come up with ways, I believe, you know, with some kind of virus, I don't trust vaccines at all, so... You know, a lot of people like to think that we're cared about and all of that, and I try to tell them this, and they don't want to believe it, but honestly, do you honestly care about the people in another state? And, you know, then, then imagine being rich with power. Do you honestly, like, not, most people don't care about others but their own. They only care about their family, their friends in a little circle. So these people who believe that they're related to the Watchers, who are related to the Fallen Angels, why would they care about you, especially when they have billions of dollars and they don't even think that they're of the same species? So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Saturn is affiliated with time. Old man time. Saturn is always depicted with a sickle and an hourglass, representing time. And of course, death and the Grim Reaper. Also with Kronos, who castrates his father Uranus, the name of another planet, and cast his part into the sea where it gives birth to all these sea creatures, and of course Aphrodite is produced from it, as well as the bloodshed on earth to giants. Kronos was known for eating all of his sons, afraid they would gain power, and he would swallow them, which I believe is linked to the cannibalism we see during rituals when babies are consumed. And this is why when you look at, um, Places like, you know, the Aztecs when they ripped out the hearts of people. This is once again ritualistic. Um, I believe the an fallen angels taught them this, but um, people honestly believe that consuming the human flesh has its own benefits, mainly that of infants. Kronos was known for eating all of his sons, afraid they would gain power and he would swallow them, which... Okay, I read that already. His wife tricked him and gave birth um, to Zeus, and when it, he came, when it came time to swallow him, she gave him a rock in place of him, and Zeus, of course, is corresponds with Jupiter, another planetary name, and he was able to defeat his father, and now Kronos, or Saturn, is in prison within Tartarus, which is interesting, because most likely, I believe he's representing a fallen angel, and I also believe he represents Satan. In the video I made a few weeks back titled World of Darkness, Fallen Angels, Project Bluebeam, and Hollow Earth, and more, I mentioned how the Watchers set up the first monetary system, and we were bound by it today. We see it in our day-to-day -day lives. If you want to live comfortable, you have to pay for it. Most times, that's by working a 9-5 to five hour job until you get old. You send your children to school where they are indoctrinated and taught lessons, and they lose their creativity. And the only creativity that they seem to have is when it comes to being a fiend and being perverse. And I'm not saying this, you know, being, I'm not being outrageous about this. This is my own personal experience with most people my age once they got to high school. Then after um, they graduate, they can choose either between going into the workforce and going straight to the 9 to 5 hour job or furthering their education. Or at college campuses, they're also indoctrinated again. And they are still a balance of the system. Personally, I didn't really want to go to college. Um, I applied for it and everything, but, you know, I still see a lot of flaws in it. I, I still, like I said in the All Seeing Eye video, think that um, it's unfair that you have to pay so much money just so you can make money. And you have to put in so much time because they don't ever want you to rest. They don't ever, you know, they're sucking your age away. They're sucking your youth away from you. And I was informed recently by a friend that at least where I'm at, when you sign up for financial aid, that you actually sign something that says if there were a draft, you'd be drafted. So if we break into World War III and America starts losing too many troops, then those people who signed away their rights aren't going to be going to college anymore. They're going to be fighting in the war whether they want to or not. And as I stated before, it's a form of depriving us of our youth, of our livelihood. A black robe is represented by Saturn since black and Saturn have a close tie. When you graduate college and get your degree, which is similar to the terms of Freemasonry, think of 33rd degree Freemasons, and so on. And at the universe, it's he, which again has the universe in it, because they love outer space, they love the ideal of cosmos and gods coming down. You are finally prepared to work the rest of your life. They know this and keep it going. The judges that decide your fate wear black robes as well. 
When you get married, you exchange rings in honor of Saturn. The Star of David on the Israeli flag is satanic. In Acts 7, 4, 43, ye, ye took up the tabernacle of Molech and the star of your god, Raphon, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away from Babylon. Again, in Amos 5, 26 through 27, but ye have borne the tabernacle of your Molech and Chim, your image, the star of your god, which ye made to yourselves. Therefore will I cause you to go into captivity beyond Damascus, saith the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. Interesting that the worship of that very star was one of the reasons that they um, had the diaspora. And whenever, you know, Israel is reestablished, what do they do? They slap on that symbol, on the flag. And of course, it's even worse because a hex is, you're putting a curse on someone. When someone wants to put a curse on you, they put a hex on you. So the fact that they put that on a nation that's supposed to be God's nation is pretty sad but you have to keep in mind that um, the Rothschilds were instrumental in uh, re-establishing Israel as a nation and I've heard that it's their family symbol in Jewish mysticism there is this with there's a story of the Silla Solomon a ring which give which is given to him with a hexagram on it which is also associated with Saturn engraved in it originally it belonged to Asmodeus a demon mentioned in the book of Tobit which if you've ever read the book of Tobit, you know about Tobias and how um, he's supposed to go find his wife, which is Sarah, and a demon named Asmodeus is constantly killing her husbands. And then um, with with Raphael, he goes on this journey and Asmodeus is chased away. You know, people can argue about it. It was once in the Bible. It was taken out like many other books. Knowing what I know now about the fact that demons and fallen angels can have sexual relationships with people, I know I've had people writing me telling me that's not true, that's not possible, but I do believe it because I've had the personal experiences and other people have written to me, plenty of them having these experiences, so I don't believe it's just, you know, something that people are making up or just a bad dream when you're waking up and something's on you, but, you know, Asmodeus is linked to um, marine spirits. A lot of times when they're casting them out, Asmodeus' name comes up a lot. But anyways, in demonology, he is considered one of the seventh, seven princes of hell. Many times, people dealing with, and I said marine spirits, and having sexual dreams, they link it to this particular demon. He tossed it in the story to the bottom of the sea, and Solomon obtains it. With, with it, he has the power to control demons, and he gets them to build the temple. And once again, remember, Freemasons are obsessed with Solomon's temple. And Solomon, remember, he was led astray. I believe that there are elements of truth within these mystic uh, Kabbalah lies. And remember, Solomon was led astray by his wives. So, another thing to keep in mind. This story, as erroneous as it sounds, is believed by many. With Saturn being the sixth planet from the sun, a gas giant, and has a hexagram on it, can easily be can easily be added up to six 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 six, which is the Antichrist number, which could have a role to play in the last days and with the mark of the beast. The halos that we see in paintings around the heads of the saints and of Jesus, which I believe this depiction of him is false, based on the fact that the picture was modeled after Cesare Borgia, which was a pope's son. And of course, in some of them, Jesus is holding his heart, which that heart is not just representing, uh, you know, him being crucified. It's actually sicker than that. It's actually representing when people would actually rip out the hearts of people and human sacrifices. And some people even say that he bears a resemblance to Quetzalcoatl. The sun they, the sun they are worshiping, the halos around the heads of the saints. And you don't just find halos on Christian uh, depictions, but you find them also on um, other religions as well. Go deeper. This isn't just the sun worship, but the black sun worship. Saturn is the masculine uh, aspect. The black hue that we see everywhere is a symbol of the black sun. And you got it in all over the world. You know, so. Now that we are familiar with the black sun, Saturn, I want to talk about Venus and what it is associated with. And the second, it is the second planet from the sun, a rock planet. They believe it's similar to Earth despite its CO2 levels and the greenhouse effect, which has made it uninhabitable. 
Venus is like the female counterpart to Saturn. She represents Aphrodite, goddess of love, Ashtar, Isis, Ishtar, and so on. She is affiliated with love, fertility, and sex, and a war goddess, which I believe could also be associated with Artemis, such as the moon, in which the sun, which is considered another feminine celestial body. Also on the moon, NASA captured pictures of what appeared to be a woman's head. They turned they turned around and dismissed it as a hoax and, and said it was just shadows being cast on the moon. My personal opinion is that it was not a hoax. Also, there was, I saw something about a woman found in a rocket as well. Um, people question the validity of this as well. I believe when the watchers were present, it wasn't much different than the Starfleet Enterprise in Star Trek. People traveled. It was good times for them. And then... And NASA, which I had no idea had a Freemason connection, I actually learned this from Ancient Aliens, which, you know, I can believe that part of it because, you know, Freemasonry isn't about everything. Um, a Freemason uh, ritual is performed on the moon at the first visitation. Also, they have an obsession with Saturn, and even the symbol is based on Isis and Osiris. After the sun and moon, Venus is the brightest thing you see in the sky, which is considered the morning star, which should raise flags considering Lucifer is considered the morning star. Venus, much like Saturn, was worshipped. The Syrians saw this planet as being ruled by the goddess Ishtar, also known as Nana, by the Babylonian goddess of love and beauty, and, may I add, pornography as well. In Greek mythology, as Aphrodite, she had temples set, set up for sacred prostitution. In the Kabbalah, there are four sacred angels of prostitution. I believe these four supposed angels listed are not angels, but sirens. Their names are Lilith, Nema, Egrat, Mahalet, and Ezef, Zunonim. There, are, there was a custom in the temples built to Aphrodite that every woman at least once in her life had to visit the temple and have sex with a complete stranger, which is pretty um, disgusting. Venus means charm. Some say the sisterhood, which would be the counter to the brotherhood that runs everything, is represented by uh, Venus. And also, the, the, East, the order of the Eastern Star open to both men and women. Some say Venus, it's Venus that they're worshipping. And the symbol Venus is used for feminism and just as the female symbol in general. Which it isn't any wonder. We see the shift. Venus, in my opinion, has a link to the Whore of Babylon. Which, when I talk about the Whore of Babylon, I do believe in an actual place. That is Babylon. And I do believe in an actual false religion. But I also believe, like I said, in a person who basically is kind of running this religion and false wave. And I know there's a false prophet, but I do believe, like I said, an actual woman. Also, Friday, named in honor of the goddess Frida, links back to Venus, just as Saturday, which is the Sabbath day God gave, um, they gave the name Saturn to. They say, planet Saturn and Venus form an eye, and in the center was its pupil. Its pupil, the red planet, being Mars. On Mars as well, um, there were strange pictures photographed by NASA, which appear to be pyramids on Mars and a face. Here's how I look at space. A few of us, I mean, few of us have been there. We can either believe what they tell us based on the pictures they showed us and, you know, what they write in their science journals. But honestly, if we've never been up there, how can we truly know that that is what we're tr that's truly there? So, you know, maybe there's more there, maybe there's less there, but I think that there's actually more up there. And I've heard stories, you know, about people claiming that there were fallen angels, actually, that they, uh, people encountered on their missions. And I don't know, you know, I've never been to space. I don't know anyone personally has been to space, but it wouldn't shock me because I believe that fallen angels, for the most part, like to hang out in space. And when they want to do something like business or come down and terrorize someone, they make their way down. I actually had a vision once of um, a fallen, a group of fallen angels in the sky, just talking, and they were arguing whether they should come down or not. And not long after I saw this, um, my dog literally let out this horrible cry, and I like ran out because I was actually in my bed, and I started praying for him. It was just 
I don't know what to say about that, but I do believe that they do reside in the sky. Also, stargazing was a pastime for people in the past. Now that we have electronics and things, we could care we could care less about nature. Besides, when stargate when stargazing, you are not seeing everything there is to see. With all of the chemtrails obstructing your view, as well as phone towers, satellites, it makes it harder. You probably catch a better view in a less developed location. So the people in the past were very familiar with the luminaries. The ancients were afraid of this planet, affiliating with bloodshed. Mars, Mars may, Mars, uh, may be associated with Horus. It's the symbol for the male sex and iron. Interestingly enough, because some believe the Earth has been through a few ages. There's five in particular, which commonly held believe there is the Golden Age, Silver Age, Bronze Age, Eroic Age and the Iron Age. Sometimes these ages are known as the Age of Gemini, Taurus, Aries, Pisces, and then finally we enter into the Age of Aquarius, which is considered similar to the Golden Age, in which the Watchers rule the Earth. Mars is affiliated with the Greek god of war, Aries. The month of March is named after Mars. In many ways, you can also associate Mars to a false messiah-like figure. After all, some believe Jesus' story was copied from Tammuz, Horus, Adonis, he was supposed to be the reincarnated form of his father, who was originally Nimrod. In some stories, Simmis actually has a sexual relationship with him as well, which is gross in Ezekiel 8, 13 through 15. And he said to me, Yet you will see still greater abominations, which they are coming. Then he brought me to the entrance of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north, and behold, a woman... And behold, women were sitting there weeping for Tammuz. He said to me, Do you see this, son of man? Yet you will see still greater abominations than these. There is a reference to him. You could also equate it, um, equate it to the Antichrist or false prophet, since he will be a Christ-like figure. It says in Revelations, he'll get people to worship the image of the beast. Mercury, which is closest to the sun and has its very own element named after it, is also a symbol used in alchemy. What is interesting is the mainstream view views the first chemist as alchemist, but in reality, alchemy's occult roots in becoming a god branching into eugenics and transhumanism, and it goes deeper than just the science of chemistry. Mercury, sulfur, and salt were, all, were ways they tried to create gold. Prisoners, slaves, and undesirables were sent to mines where mercury was found and often poisoned, and to this day, Archaeologists could see the red deposits from where they were poisoned in their skulls. In China, Ko Hung believed if a man ate gold representing perfection, then he would achieve it. He also used cinnabar, another form to try to walk on water, smear it on the door, step to ward off thieves, and mixed it with raspberry to enable elder, the elderly to beget children. Mercury was also used to treat STDs, and for some it actually worked, to some extent. But mercury had its very own massive effect in creating illnesses as well. Mercury was associated with with the god Mercury, which in Greek is the equivalent of Hermes, which represents wisdom. In the Kabbalah, Mercury is part of the eighth of the divine spirits, also called Hod in Hebrew, meaning glory, and in the realm of intellect and, sh and shares a connection with Saturn. Hod also forms part of the lowest triad of spheres, the astral pers personal together with Netzach, Venus and Yassad the moon. Netzach, at the base of the pillar of action, manifests the creative power of the pillar in motion and instinct, balancing the intellect of Hod. Yassad is the field in which they both operate. Neptune, interesting enough, is associated with hell. And I don't think I need to say too much more about it. As we can see, mother goddess worship and just worship of other gods and polytheism has been around for a very long time, dating back to the Watchers. They left their writings purposely behind so that someone would find them and believe them and keep alive what they had started. Sort of like when you go to a bathroom and you see someone tackily wrote a message on the wall saying to call them or whatever profane thing. Or you see graffiti. It is no different. If you were going to be in prison and you wanted to leave your mark, you would. You would. And they did with what they taught even after Noah and his family survived the flood. By the time he had grandchildren, they were worshipping demons and fallen angels all over again. The story started to alter about the flood, and the names of certain people began to change depending on the language. Remember, the Tower of Babel occurred not too long after. But it's all the same. 
just because society as a whole has decided mythology is strictly that doesn't mean that those that run things have that notion. If they thought it was nonsense, why do they put your zodiac signs in the back of your magazines? Why is it that when you go to the District of Columbia, which is named after a goddess, there's um, all of these pagan statues and symbols? Why is it that, you know, you can look at all of the different um, architecture and see how it forms pentagrams and all of that? And why is it that um, the Statue of Liberty, once again, after another goddess, after Venus? What may be one of the most interesting things that I've come to the conclusion in the process of putting this entire thing together was a theory I discovered which may sound a little far-fetched, but I'm one to give it some attention. Someone proposed a striking similarity between some of the planets, the moon and sun, and the seals broken. They broke it down into a chart based on the days of the week, starting with Monday, which is moon day, and its color white and they equated it to conquest. The second seal they equated to Tuesday associated with Mars, which is the red planet with war and bloodshed. The third planet they associated with Mercury on Wednesday representing famine. Thursday they equated it to Jupiter, which they equated it with the pale, her pale horse with death and hell. Friday they represented uh, represent with Venus. They, they thought it uh, embodied when the souls of the mor martyrs and purity. Saturn is associated with, with Saturn, which is which is also black with darkness and cataclysm. And Sunday they represent it with sun with the sun and yellow with silence of angels and trumpets. I'm skeptical of it, but it does have some interesting similarities. If nothing else, you can take it or leave it. And if you don't, at least you know which planet corresponds with the days of the week. Although Neptune and Uranus and the dwarf non-planet Pluto are left out. Something I want to shed light to is the scriptures mentioning what is occurring in the heavens in the end. In Revelation 6:12, I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Joel 2:31, the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Acts 2:20, the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great a notable day of the Lord come. In Matthew twenty four twenty nine. immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Constantly we see, which is part of the sixth seal, the sun turning black or darkening, the moon turning to blood, no matter where you read. Some equate this to a blood moon, and we have had, one, there are three more left to go, but there is no guarantee that the, any of the coming three have anything to do with a particular occasion. The stars falling from the sky, that is interesting. Could this be referring to the literal gas, uh, balls of gas falling? Could it be referring to angels falling? Um, since angels oftentimes are equated with stars. Um, it's interesting to note that some people in the cult believe stars are actual portals. And last but not least, the sun turned black or dark, and most people think this is an eclipse, the clouds covering it. What if it were literal? What if the black sun, the oh so many worship, came into orbit? The planet representing death, time, destruction. What, um, what if it actually came into orbit and the heavens were shaken? That means every planet, one thing that was always difficult for me was why would God create all these planets and they have no purpose. There are many theories about the planets uh, Linu and, Nib and Nibiru being the planet X, 10th planet, coming into orbit and destroying the Earth. I propose, I propose in a prior video the elite may try to make a break for the moon or another planet to escape the tribulation, but they will not succeed because as described in Amos 9 on the day of the Lord, which um, could correspond with the sun darkening. Uh, they're very idle that they've worshipped. They come into orbit and they, the wicked, will be destroyed. It will be the end of time, represented by Saturn, and time will no longer matter. Death, after all of this happens, will be thrown into the lake of fire, Revelations 20:14, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. 
like I said, these are only theories I'm proposing as an interpretation. I'm not going to say that they're actually going to happen, but I do find them interesting. I hope you enjoyed my video and learned something from it. Um, this is a subject like many of the others I feel I will continue to learn more about and research. And if I find out anything new, I can always do a follow-up on it or incorporate it into another video. Once again, I'd like to thank all of you who have been watching my videos and have subscribed. I couldn't have done it without you guys. And for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, thank you for watching as well. Please share this video, get the word out there, and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any thoughts, comments you'd like to make, feel free to do so in the comment section or inbox me. Um, either on here through Facebook or on Twitter or you can tweet or post on the wall of the page. I look forward to hearing from all of you. God bless and I hope you all have a wonderful week.